Please note that filming text on the whiteboard requires extremely bright studio lighting. Subsequently, sunglasses were worn during the filming of this video to prevent damage to my retinas. A note on how to use these sessions. Jot down the notes as we go, so we'll help you learn the material in a more interactive way, and you can use them as study notes later. Also, in the small chance that the discrepancy arises between the professor's notes and mine, always go with your professor. They're the one grading you. Lastly, any examples or analogies used in the session are not meant to support or criticize politics, religion, or lifestyle. They're merely learning tools to help understand the material. All right, guys and girls, it's time to get cracking. All right, you guys, before we can get into any organic chemistry, we first have to do a quick general chemistry review. So in today's session, we're gonna be reviewing the key concepts from general chemistry that you're gonna to need to know for organic chemistry. And if you're at all like me, by the time I took OCHEM, I barely remembered any of my GCHEM. So if that's you, don't freak out. That's how we're gonna go over these key concepts in today's session. And for those of you guys that do have your GCHEM down cold, then awesome, this will be a quick refresher for you guys, and we can all start out from the same page. So let's go ahead and get started with our GCHEM review. All right, so the first thing I wanna cover here is what a compound is. And some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, we're going over what a compound is? That's so basic. And yeah, it is basic, you guys, but check it out. Because we throw around key terms like this all the time, like compound, atom, reaction. And we use these words so often in school that they sound familiar to us, so we think we automatically know them. But a lot of times what happens is, we look at a word like compound and it's like, hey, I know what a compound is, I hear that word all the time. But when you actually go home and think about it, it's like, Man, I hear that word so often, I thought I knew what it was, but if you actually ask me what a compound is, I don't know if I could tell you. And I want you guys to be confident about every single thing we talk about in session, especially this first one. Because the idea is that you guys can all do awesome in OCHEM. What we have to do together, though, is build a firm foundation and then build step by step on top of it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with what a compound is. All right, so a compound is just atoms that are stuck together by some type of glue. What does this mean? Well, check it out. Pretend that this marker is an atom. Pretend that this marker is an atom. Okay, so by themselves, they're just atoms. But if you stick those atoms together with some type of glue, then bam, that's a compound now. And hey, you don't have to stop there. If you've got another marker, another atom, then hey, by himself, he's just an atom. But if you stick them together with those guys, then bam, this whole thing is a compound now. Okay, so a compound is just atoms that are stuck together by some type of glue. And there's lots of different types of glue out there, right, you guys? There's crazy glue. There's Elmer's white glue. There's glue stick. Doesn't matter what type of glue you use, though. As long as you stick these atoms together with some type of glue, then bam, that's a compound. All right, so... What's another way of saying that these atoms are stuck together or that they're glued together? You can say that these atoms are bonded together. There's a bond that exists between these two atoms that are sticking them together. And this is an important point in chemistry because not all bonds are equal. You can either have strong bonds where it's hard to pull apart, or you can have weaker bonds where it's easy to pull apart those atoms. Okay, so just like in real life, if you wanted to stick these markers together in real life, you could either use something like super glue that would form a strong bond and would be hard to pull those apart, or you could use something like glue stick that would form a weaker bond and would be easy to pull those markers apart. So just like with compounds, these are just atoms that are stuck together by some type of glue. And depending on what type of glue you use to stick atoms together, it's going to form stronger or weaker bonds. But hey, you guys, in chemistry, we obviously don't have super glue or glue stick to stick atoms together. Do you guys know what the glue is that sticks atoms together? This glue in chemistry comes in the form of electrons, electrons interacting between these two atoms. And the way these electrons interact between these two atoms is what's going to give you either a strong bond that's hard to pull apart or a weaker bond that's easy to pull apart. But hey, you guys, you don't know too much about this right now, but you will in a little bit. All I want you guys to understand for right now is that a compound is just atoms that are stuck together by some type of glue. And that glue comes in the form of what? 
electrons, electrons interacting between these two atoms. And depending on the type of interaction of those electrons, you can either have a strong bond or a weak bond, okay? All right, so go ahead and write this down in your notes right now, and we'll refer back to it later when we talk about this in detail. For now, though, all I want you guys to understand is that a compound is just atoms that are stuck together by some type of glue. And that glue comes in the form of electrons, electrons interacting between these two atoms to stick them together. And there's two ways that electrons can interact between these two atoms to stick them together. You can either have electron taking, okay, so this E with a negative sign next to it, this is the abbreviation for electron. Okay, so the first way that electrons can interact between these two atoms is by electron taking. That's going to form an ionic bond between these two atoms to stick them together, and that's going to be called an ionic compound. Okay, so the second way that electrons can interact is by electron sharing, and that's going to form a covalent bond between these two atoms, and so this is going to be called a covalent compound. And we're going to go over big time about what this means later. For right now, all I want you guys to understand is the big picture. That a compound is just atoms stuck together by some type of glue. That glue comes in the form of electrons. Electrons can interact in two ways, electron taking or electron sharing. And you guys remember how I was talking about depending on the type of electron interaction, you can either have stronger bonds or weaker bonds. Well, we're going to talk about why this is the case later, but just to give you guys a heads up for right now, a covalent bond is a stronger bond than an ionic bond. Okay, so a covalent bond is a stronger bond that's harder to pull apart versus an ionic bond that's a weaker bond that's easier to pull apart. Okay, but don't get bogged down with the details for right now, you guys, just big picture. All right, so we just said that compounds were atoms that are stuck together, but what are atoms? Let's find out. All right, so what are atoms? Atoms are just the building blocks to make compounds. It's like, what do you make a house out of? You make a house out of bricks. You take one brick, stick on another brick, stick on another brick, and eventually you add enough bricks to make the house that you want. It's the same thing with atoms and compounds. You take one atom, you stick on another atom, you stick on another atom, you keep sticking on atoms until you make the compound that you want. And just like there's a bunch of different types of bricks to choose from to stick together to make a bunch of different types of houses, same thing with atoms and compounds. There's a bunch of different atoms to choose from to make a bunch of different types of compounds. Like all those letters that you see on the periodic table, like C, N, O, F, that stands for carbon atoms, nitrogen atoms, oxygen atoms, fluorine atoms, and so forth. Okay, so that's the big picture here, you guys. Atoms are just the building blocks that you stick together with one another to make a compound. So let's go ahead and take a look at the structure of atoms now, what these atoms look like. All right, so the structure of atoms. What do these things look like? Well, chances are you guys are very familiar with the shape of atoms already. If you guys play any sports like baseball, golf, tennis, volleyball, any sports that use a round ball, that's the shape that atoms come in. They're round balls, they're round spheres. So whenever you guys think of what atoms look like, I want you guys to think of a golf ball, a baseball, or a volleyball, because atoms come in spheres, but they come in all sizes. Okay, so that's what atoms look like from the outside. They're just round spheres. But what do atoms look like on the inside? Well, if you guys remember from GChem, there were three main parts to an atom. You guys remember what they were? There was a positively charged part, a neutrally charged part, and a negatively charged part. Protons, neutrons, and electrons, right? So let's go ahead and draw up a diagram here so we can see exactly what an atom looks like on the inside. All right, so here we have a diagram of an atom. 
And I know I told you guys that an atom is a round sphere, and this is going to be the ugliest round sphere you've ever seen. I'm not that great at drawing circles, sorry about that. But you get the idea, right, you guys? Okay, so what we're looking at here is a cross-section of an atom. Okay, so an atom is a round sphere. What I've done here is cut this in 